good to see everybody. Uh, my name is Michael. I'm the pastor here. If you're online, uh, we're glad you're joining us you're in person. And as always, I'm very happy to see uh, all of your faces today. Uh, and so today, I just want to um, encourage you uh, to come back for the high-end praise tonight. There'll be good food, but there'll be great worship uh, and great music. And so I'm glad that uh, uh, you guys got to see this morning. Generational worship. Uh, I love that about our church. Um, there are people that are uh, gifted and at all ages and can lead us. So um, thank you guys for that. And come back tonight to be a part of what we're doing. Uh, and so today uh, we are in our series. But this is kind of like a little mini series or branch off of uh, the series that we've been in. Uh, we're heading into Thanksgiving. And so I thought, well, you know, let's have a let's turn and have a little bit of focus on thankfulness. And today, even though we're in our series on church evaluation, we're turning our focus to being thankful for the throne. And so I don't know what you're thankful for in your life. Uh, there are many things, no matter where you are at, uh, what season you're at in life, to be thankful for. But today I want us to take a look at the throne and this picture that uh, Jesus gives John. He opens up this door, the throne room of heaven, and he says, take a look and write down what you see. And so this is a really cool part of the book of Revelation, right after <clears throat> Jesus gives us uh, a lot of helpful things about the churches to help us evaluate uh, but if we get through all of that and then we, we see the throne room and it doesn't affect us and it doesn't produce thankfulness and worship in our hearts, uh, then maybe we've missed something. And so I don't want to leave this part off. Okay, so the next couple of Sundays will be in Revelation chapter 4. And the phrase I want you to remember <clears throat> should be up on the screens, but the phrase I want you to remember is hearing and seeing. Hearing and seeing. So we've been uh, by John. Jesus has been doing this through John, paint, painted this picture of what the churches are supposed to look like, and now he gives us a really clear picture of what the throne looks like. So if you can imagine being in heaven, this door being open to you uh, before you die or before Jesus uh, brings us to be with him, he did that for John, and he did it to encourage us and to help us see what we should be thankful for. And so as I thought about being thankful and, and the throne, and I was looking up just various things, and I found something by a couple of artists, you may know them, Kanye West and Jay-Z. Uh, if you do, you don't know, it's okay. <laughs> don't worry about it. Uh, but these guys, they came out with an album back in 2011 uh, entitled Watch the Throne. I would go listen to it, by the way. It's just an example. But they came out with this album called Watch the Throne. And in it, among other things, they talked about their various accolades and accomplishments and all the things that they had done. And they... And what they were saying, they basically said, hey, if you're anybody, if you've accomplished anything, you might want to take a look at our example because we've, we've uh, basically accomplished this throne for ourselves uh, on the world stage. And, and many of us knew those names uh, because we were aware of those guys. I think they did music or rap or something. And, and so they, they built this big album off of all that, everything they've accomplished. And it's, it's typical of our culture, isn't it, that... Uh, anybody who has become successful or done anything or done well for themselves, they start to go, you're right, I am the center of my own universe. In fact, not only I am the center of my own universe, but everybody else around me should be worshiping me, right? And we see that all the time, especially with uh, musicians or people in Hollywood. They, they say, yeah, well, I, I am great, so you do need to put me on that throne in your life. But, but this almost always goes bad, doesn't it? We see the, these characters, these people in Hollywood, these musicians, oh, they're in rehab again, or oh, this thing happened again, or oh, they're on number four or five for their wives or their husbands, and, and, they, and we're going like, why can't they work it out? Well, because they've, at the center of their lives, they've placed themselves, and it always self-destructs, self doesn't it? If we're the center of our world. And so, <clears throat> you might be interested, a number of years later, Kanye West became a Christian, or at least he said he did, so... Uh, he said he became a Christian, uh, and he came, he's come out with some interesting albums uh, over the last couple of years since saying he became a Christian. Uh, in one album in particular, he uh, titled it after his mom, Donda, I think that's how you say it, and he had this song in particular on it called Praise God. Now, how do you go from <laughs> watch the throne, watch our throne, to praise God? Uh, it just it seemed interesting to me, so I started looking up some of the lyrics, and Although he still has some things from the past in his lyrics and colorful language, uh, he, he uh, said this in this song, Praise God. We, we go and praise our way out the grave, 
living, speaking, praise God. Walk out the graveyard, back to life. I serve, follow your worth, see the new sight, into the night. And this is one of the lines, <clears throat> that was the chorus, this is one of the lines that he uses. Look at new scenes, open my life, I'm sub subject to memes. You don't know what that is either, don't worry. I signed a few, I polished their dreams, an angel on earth come under my wing, stop running your publishers. They publish the headlines and say wrong things. Y'all treat the Lord and Savior like renter's insurance. You know what I mean. So maybe you don't know what any of that means, <laughs> but uh, from his perspective, I'll tell you what I think he's saying. So Tanya came from this place of making a self-titled album, Watch the Throne, and now he's producing some albums that are a little bit different about the Lord. And some of the things he talks about, he's saying, treat the Lord like renter's insurance. Let's pay for it a little bit if we need it, and then hopefully we never do, right? And so this is kind of the, the focus of his, his albums moving forward. But let's be careful that we don't, we don't think, oh, well, we're in this place that, uh, yeah, we do serve the Lord. We do have him as the focus of our lives just because we don't come out with these albums of our life saying, look at me, and I'm the center of my universe. Because maybe, for you, maybe there's something today that you do need to have transformed. Maybe there's something in your life you're going, yeah, I am on the throne. But you really shouldn't be. God should be in that place. And so, just like Kanye, maybe we need to have a transformation in our lives and see the throne for what it is. And so, John, as we look at the really the last couple of weeks that we'll be in this series, uh, we know John's on this island, right? And he's, uh, he, he's had this vision from the Lord. Jesus comes and he puts him, his hand on him. He's terrified. He says, don't worry, John, because I'm the first and the last. And so at the beginning of this, John is going, hey, guys, we, we need to see who Jesus is. We need to see who he is. And he reminds them through taking a look at what Jesus has to say. And in this phrase, remember, hearing and seeing, John's not just, he's not just going, oh, hey, there's some things that I came up with. There's some things that I've seen. But no, he says, hey, I've heard this and I've seen it with my own eyes. Jesus shows him. And so, number one, it says here, here's the fill in the blank. Who is on the throne? That's a question for us. We're going to have a couple of questions here. Who is on the throne? Verse one says, after this I looked and behold a door standing open in heaven and the first voice which I had heard speaking to me like a trumpet said, come up here. And I will show you what must take place after this. And so what, what is Jesus giving to John? He's, he's giving this view. He's opening up this door. And what does he hear? I heard speaking to me like a trumpet. And here's what he said. Come up here and I will show you what must take place after this. So Jesus is inviting him into this window. So he's, he's giving him all this information about the churches. Say, say this to this church. Say this to this church. And then he says, hey, come up here, John. Let me show you something. And he opens this door, and he gives us a glimpse. And so now John's writing these things down. In verse 2, it says, At once I was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne stood in heaven, with one seated on the throne. And so when John is seeing this, he's not, he's not seeing himself. He's not, he's not seeing somebody else or something to worship. No, he's seeing God on the throne. It says, because at once he was in the spirit. Behold, a throne stood in heaven with one seated on the throne. Now, maybe you've been in like a really popular place, maybe a really important place. Maybe you've even been to some place like the White House. I don't know. I've been outside. They didn't let me in. Uh, I've seen the outside of it. Uh, maybe you've been fortunate enough to, to be in one of those type of places and go, wow, this is like such a cool space. And I can't believe that the president sits there. Well, even more than that, maybe you've been in a space like that and you've just sort of been in awe. Can you imagine, John, the doors opened up to the throne room of heaven. He's looking in and like God's sitting on the throne and he's like, I cannot believe I'm even here seeing this. And he's not saying, I'm on that throne. He knows that God is on the throne. And so maybe this is just a perspective that we need to change as we think about being thankful for the throne. There's a lot of things we could be thankful for in our lives. But if it was just that, if that was the only thing that we had, just God sitting on the throne, would that be enough? And so here's the second fill in the blank. What is around the throne? What is around the throne? 
So there's these things that John notices and he tells us about. So not just God sitting on the throne. Most of us would say, yeah, you're right. Um, I mean, Jesus is on the throne of my life. He is giving me direction. I'm seeking him constantly for where I should go and what I should do. But here, John is going, let me share with you a little bit more. You're right, God's on the throne. And then he's going he's gonna to open up the door a little bit wider and show us some things. So uh, in verse 3, it says, And he who sat there had the appearance of Jasper and Carnelian, and around the throne was a rainbow that had the appearance of an emerald. Wow, have you ever been in a place like that? Um, some of us have seen, you know, like, uh, nice or bright or shining things, or maybe even been in a palace, and, you know, just kind of how it's, like, decorated, and we're like, wow. That's amazing. But he says, he who sat on the throne had this appearance of jasper, carnelian, and around the throne was a rainbow that had the appearance of emerald. Wow, sounds like an amazing place to be. And so it says here that uh, he has this appearance of this rear stone. So when you see the uh, heaven talked about, we all hear, you know, we think about like the streets of gold, you know, and like that's going to be amazing. Like there's nothing that we could produce in this life with the resources that we have that were compared to heaven. And so when we read this, it says that his appearance is like Jasper, Iespus in the Greek. It's only used four times in the New Testament, so I'll just read a few uses here. In Revelation 21, 18, it says, The wall was built of Jasper, while the city was pure gold, like clear glass. And in 21, 19, it says, The foundations of the wall of the city were adorned with every kind of jewel. The first was Jasper, the second, sapphire, the third, agate fourth emerald so now maybe some of us we have like you know heirlooms and jewelry and things that have been passed down too and and those remind us of this like beautiful amazing picture of who god is and we have this in just a little tiny piece uh and so my my grandmother uh gave me uh this uh this stone um and it was a stone that my grandfather had given to her and we i took that and uh, for our 10-year wedding anniversary this last year, had that reset and gave that to Christy for our 10-year wedding anniversary. Uh, and just a beautiful stone that my grandfather, who's passed, had given to my grandmother. Uh, and it's it's cool to see now. It's a special gift that I had for her, but it's a reminder uh, of the beauty that God's given us in the, in the relationships that he's given us, too. And, and we see those things and we go, wow, those are amazing. But imagine all the beauty and precious stones and gold and the things that God has limitless in heaven. He creates everything out of. And then we have this word here for rainbow. And I, I like this because he says that this rainbow, a rainbow that had the appearance of an emerald, it was around the throne. So like we look you know, up into the sky and we hope after a storm we like see part of a rainbow. And sometimes there's like those devil rainbows that get put online and we're like, devil rainbow, wow. But, and we just hope for like just like part of one. Like we just want to see how you know beautiful the rainbow is. Well, here in heaven, in the throne room, it says, and around the throne was a rainbow that had the appearance of an emerald. And this word for rainbow is iris in the Greek, and it's only used just a few times. In Revelation 10, 1, the same word is used. Then I saw another mighty angel coming down from heaven and wrapped in a cloud with a rainbow over his head, and his face was like the sun, and his legs like a pillar of fire. So this rainbow, where do we see it used? Where have we seen it used? At the very beginning of the Bible, right? When the, our children's story, when uh, God flooded the earth and he, he takes everyone out of the equation, he takes everyone's lives except for Noah and his family and the animals that they put on the ark. And the rainbow appears and says, this is this promise, this sign that I've given that I'm not going to flood the earth again. And so we think about that. So there's a rainbow at the beginning and there's a rainbow at the end. It's around the throne and this word here for rainbow, you find it in uh, Genesis uh, 9 here in verse 13. It says, I've set my bow in the cloud, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth, and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the water shall never come again, flood, destroy the earth. So in Hebrew, this word for bow, teshtheth. Uh, it just means God's personal identifying bow. It's not like, we, we can take that rainbow, we can use it for other things. When the word is used here, in both the Greek and the Hebrew, this rainbow is meant to be God's like personal identification. Like if you were to see him, you'd be like, rainbow, it's God. 
God's there. He's showing up. Oh, it's around his throne. Oh, it's in the sky. Yeah, God. Not other things. So <clears throat> I saw this t-shirt on our life. Uh, my wife and I, Christy, went to the Ark Encounter a couple of years ago, and uh, there were these t-shirts hanging up. They were trying to sell t-shirts at the Ark Encounter. It's a cool thing you should go. And on it, it said, taken back the rainbow. <laughs> I thought, well, that's probably not going to make too many people happy, but isn't that a cool t-shirt, right? Take it back to rainbow because in its initial meaning, in its original meaning, it's meant to be focused on God and his glory. He gave us the rainbow as a sign of his promise. And if you look at it in the Hebrew, he's going, this is my personal identification. Like if I were to sign my name, rainbow in the sky, that's me. Not anything else, right? So we need to we think about that. Maybe think about what it really, really means because it's around the throne too. And so as we think about the promise and then we move into heaven, John gives us this picture. He goes, when you get there, yeah, his name's going to be above the throne. It's going to be a rainbow. It's his personal identification. And I thought that was awesome. So then we move to the last point. What comes from the throne? So uh, we've seen what's around. Who's on it? It's a beautiful picture of who God is in eternity past. And it says in verse 4, Around the throne were 24 thrones. And seated on those thrones were 24 elders clothed in white garments with golden crowns. On their heads it, and to me it's amazing to think like you think about it being in the setting you're in the throne room there's already the throne of God and there's these 24 other thrones these elders um, likely individuals if you look at commentaries uh, people who have served in the Old and New Testament and God's placed these guys here to rule and reign but yet he's also told us that we're going to rule and reign as well so when we get there we're going to be worshiping God we're going to see all these things around the throne the gold the jewels Precious things, the rainbow, his signature around him. And then Paul reminds us in 1 Corinthians 6, 1 through 4, what we're going to be doing. And then how we need to be focused right now. Because we get bent out of shape about a lot of things, don't we? We're like, that bothers me or I don't agree with you. And Paul has some words to remind us what's most important because we will be standing in that place of judgment with God in heaven. It says in 1 Corinthians 6, 1 through 4, when one of you has a grievance against another does he dare go to the law before the unrighteous instead of the saints or do you not know that the saints will judge the world if the world is to be judged by you are you incompetent to try tri tri trivial cases do you not know that we are to judge angels how much more than matters pertaining to this life so if you have such cases why do you lay them before those who have no standing in the church so paul reminds us and and Jesus is telling us not only through this picture of the throne room, but as a reminder of what Paul says here, we're given this special placement. And when we look at this throne, we're opening up that door and we're looking into this space and we have to go, man, that is a place that I'm going to be. I'm going to be sitting around the throne with the elders and God is going to give us the special placement of judging the entire universe. And that's amazing to me. So he's, he's already given us this place. We just have this to look forward to. And then in verse 5, from the throne came flashes of lightning and rumbles and peals of thunder. Before the throne were burning seven torches of fire, which are the seven spirits of God. And so I, I love this, this like picture. Like first we're like, oh, this is so amazing. Like there's all the thrones. We're going to be there with them. There's going to be the rainbow. These like these precious stones. There's gold there too. We got all these things in our mind and it's amazing. But then we get to like this awe and this reverence portion of who God is and in chapter 4 here, and, and here's what he talks about, these flashes of lightning, rumbles and peals of thunder, and then before the throne, seven torches of fire, and so this word here for lightning, estrape in the, in the Greek, uh, it's this, uh, it can be used for a variety of things, a lamp, but this more powerful meaning for lightning is used in a variety of places in the New Testament, and so here's one in Matthew 24, 27. For the lightning comes from the east and shines as far as the west, and so will be the coming of the Son of Man. So this illustration of power. Uh, you go all the way to the end of Revelation, chapter 16, 18. You use the same word here. And there were flashes of lightning, rumbles and peals of thunder, and a great earthquake such as there had never been since man was on the earth. So great was that earthquake. And so I, I love that when we think about God, and it's not hard for kids to imagine this, right? We, we read the Bible. We, um, I love like the, um, the action Bible we have to give out to the kids. They're going to the children's church. 
because uh, there's these vivid pictures. Sometimes it's scary. As Alana and I, we open up the, this book um, every night before she's going to bed. We read the Action Bible, and sometimes there's some scary scenes in there. There's some like lightning, some peals of thunder, some something that illustrates God's you know awe, His amazingness. And, and we lose sight of that as adults, right? We just sort of get to this place where, yeah, God's great. He's He's really amazing. But when when I uh, read this to my daughter, we talk about it. She's like, that is awesome. That's amazing. And I'm like, you're right. And so we never forget that, who God is in his glory. And because when he appears and we see him in the throne, uh, there's this flash of lightning that takes place in these rumbles of thunder. In the Greek here for the, the rumbles of thunder, it's this one word, bronte, which is only used one other place in Revelation 19, 6. It says, Then I heard what seemed to be the voice of a great multitude, like a roar of many waters, and like the sound of mighty peals of thunder, crying out, Hallelujah, for the Lord God Almighty reigns. So I, I grew up in uh, North Texas, Dallas, Fort Worth. Um, if you've ever been there, ever spent any amount of time there, you know it's known for severe weather. <clears throat> so we have our own version of severe weather, you know, the white stuff that piles up. And people keep asking me if I get tired of that. Like, no, not really. I like the snow. So just wait. Just wait. But if you go to North Texas, then uh, their version of that is severe thunderstorms, lightning, thunder, tornadoes sometimes, which is the scarier part of that. Uh, but many times growing up, I remember just looking at my window, and it wouldn't just be like, you know, a few flashes of lightning. It'd be hours of severe thunder and lightning and those rumbles. And when you, you hear them, and they kind of just like shake everything like a little bit. You know, kind of like you're watching Jurassic Park and like the water's, you know, shaking like in, the, in the car. Like that, like it just shakes everything a little bit, and you're going like, whoa, like, that's serious. That's serious stuff. In the same way, I mean, you can imagine being before the throne, these flashes of lightning, not just the beauty in heaven and in the throne room, but these things that come from the throne. When we're there, we're just going to be in awe. Like right now, when those kind of things happen, we hear lightning, thunder, like kids running to the table, and we're just, we just think to ourselves, wow, like God's amazing. And there's destructive power in those things, but it's a good thing that we might see that and be put in awe. I remember many times I would, there'd be a thunderstorm kind of rolling through, and I'd go get the ladder and like get on the roof, which is, of course, the perfect place to be in a thunderstorm. And so I'd get up there, and of course, you know, my mom wouldn't be super happy about that. Uh, but I just, I wanted to be up there. I just wanted to see, like, the, the awe-inspiring power of God, the lightning, the thunder as it rumbled things. <clears throat> and I don't know, I don't know where you're at, and maybe that... Power, um, that awe of who God is and being in a place like that, the throne room, which we all will be at some point, if we put our faith and trust in Jesus, um, should should make us like quake a little bit, right? When we hear that thunder, when we hear that light, when we see God for who he is, especially in the throne room, like John said, those things should remind us and point us to who God is. Then he moves to these seven burning torches. And although there's a number of interpretations here, some say this is the representation of God's character, all the things that come forth from him, who he is. There's also the seven churches that we've been looking at and how God pours his spirit into the churches that he's given through the Holy Spirit. But I want to remind us that as we read this, and we read these words, uh, that there were all these things taking place, and these flashes of lightning and rumbles of thunder around this beautiful throne, and they're burning seven torches of fire, which is seven spirits of God. No matter what way you take this, God's given us this beautiful picture. And he's reminded us that we, we do have a purpose. He's using us now, and he's going to use us when we get to heaven. I think sometimes, too, we just sort of think, like, oh, yeah, the seven spirits, the church. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, that's good. We're doing our work here. We get to heaven. I guess it's going to be, you know, party all the time. And, uh, you know, we're going to be enjoying what's going on there. We will. But God's got some purposes for us to not just here, but we're in heaven. It's going to be a party, but it's also going to be, okay, my people who are with me in the throne room, let's get to work. There's going to be this new heaven and this new earth. And as we talk about these things and, and that being formed, next week we're going to look at these creatures around the throne and what that means for us and this other really awesome picture that God paints for us. As we move towards Revelation 5, and this amazing picture of what he's going to do in the future. 
And while we're not going to read the entirety of Revelation, this picture that we do have right here at the beginning about the churches and what God's given us in the throne, and just trying to help us remember, we, we don't read this very often. We don't read, maybe you do through the book of Revelation, that'd be good. But when we read these things, it's, just, it's hard for us to frame. And so my hope is that as we do, we're looking at these things and we're going, wow, there really is an awesome God that we worship. And we can't lose sight of that. It should motivate us in every aspect of life. Uh, and not just not just in these places where we come and we worship, like uh, the worship was awesome this morning, and just listening to Aubrey sing and, and the band leading. Um, and in those moments we go, yeah, God is awesome. And he's amazing. And I like, I get these pictures of him. But then when we leave, the busyness of life, right? And it crowds in, doesn't it? We're coming on Thanksgiving. We're like, what are we gonna do with this family? What are we gonna do over here? And we, we get busy with our plans. And then sometimes we forget what to really be thankful for. And we know we should be thankful for the throne and who God is. And if that was the only thing we had, because my guess is probably most of us are leaving here today, and we're, we're going to work some this week. We're going to have some family time, some gatherings, some Thanksgiving, some good food. There's a lot of things that we have to be thankful for. But what should be primary? And maybe for people who didn't know Jesus before, somebody like Tanya, who maybe turns his life around when he finds Jesus and starts singing about him because what else can you do when you know the king of the universe? So that's what you should start doing, right? So for us in this season, what does it look like? Um, leaving, doing our family things, being really busy, trying to get those gifts that other people are trying to get. And if I don't get the last one, I'm going to be really upset that there's not another one because those boats are just sitting out there, right? So if I don't, if I don't get, I don't know, everybody's going to burst free by that. And if I don't get that gift, then I'm just, you know, I'm not going to be happy and everything's going to be ruined. <sighs> But even if we didn't get anything, we think about Thanksgiving, we think about Christmas coming up, we think if we got nothing else, if we just had God sitting on the throne, which is where he is. He doesn't move off of that throne. He's always there. If we get this picture and be in awe of him on a regular basis, I think that would maybe change, it would shape things differently for what we do and who we are. And so I, I myself, I think about Heaven and what well, that will be like more often now. Uh, it's been uh, it's been a year since my grandfather passed away, um, and it was semi abrupt. He started to not do so well, and I ended up going down there because things got worse and to visit. And he had passing away while I was there, which was a gift, uh, and I was grateful for that. But I'm reminded there's all these people right they are passing away before us, and they're going and 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 we forget like <laughs> in like this you know magical place, and there's baby angels flying around. But where, where are they? Well, they're around the throne. They're with God in heaven. They're seeing these things in real time. And like we're just trying like with our small, finite minds to understand who God is in this beautiful picture of what he is and how we should be thankful for that throne. And so as we think about that, I want us to be encouraged. I know when the holiday season comes up to the Christmas season, Thanksgiving, uh, we think about those people who aren't there anymore. And I want you to be reminded that maybe in this season, instead of us being sad, which that's okay too, but be encouraged because as we think about the throne of those people who are there, like the elders sitting around the throne, they're seeing God and all of his beauty, the precious stones around the throne, a signature of his bow around his throne, and all the peals of lightning and thunder that are taking place. Uh, and that we just, we try to frame in such a small way in our experience here on earth, uh, it'll become more clear when we're there. Uh, but I want us to think about that, the the things that we get to anticipate being there for in heaven and the throne and being around God. Uh, and then next week we'll finish up chapter four. Um, so maybe, I don't know, maybe you're here today and you're thinking like, ah, I hear this a lot of stuff about this throne. I'm not really sure what that's about. Um, well, God is this king that we worship. And we believe that if you were to put your faith and trust in him as your Lord and Savior, to admit you're a sinner, believe that Jesus is God's son, and confess that with your mouth and you will be saved. And you'll be able to be in this place with him in heaven. And this door that John opened briefly, and he talked about what he saw, this will be our eternity. And this will be the place that we will be and be in awe forever. Uh, and what a wonderful place that we get to be if you would make that decision. And uh, I'll be here afterwards. I'd love to talk to you about that. If you're online, uh, feel free to reach out to us afterwards. And let me pray for us. We'll close. Uh, Father, we come to you today. Uh, we feel ill-equipped to be able uh, to picture you, to frame you. We, we thank you that 
um, you gave John this picture, you not only opened up the fabric of space and time for what's going to happen in the future for us here on earth, uh, but you opened up this door to heaven and this even more private door into your throne room uh, that we would be able to see this. Uh, so God, I pray that we'd be able to ask these questions of who's on that throne. Um, God, we, we know it shouldn't be us. Sometimes we put ourselves there. Uh, God, I pray that uh, as we look towards the throne, we would actually see what's around it, that our culture wouldn't distort uh, these elements of who you are and your beauty, um, that we would make the things that are about you truly about you. Um, simple things like a rainbow in the sky, um, your signature to us of your blessing and promise. Uh, we pray that as we get towards the end, as we look towards those who have gone before us, who have passed, uh, we pray you give us right perspective um, to be able to see the throne for what it is and this beauty that you've given us. Uh, God, we pray for anybody here, anybody online that doesn't know you, doesn't understand that beauty that needs to uh, trust in you for the first time. Um, God, that they would make that decision and follow you uh, with their lives. Uh, we thank you for this picture that uh, John heard and he saw and he shared with us. It is given, you've given to us in your word. Uh, help us not to forget it during this Thanksgiving and Christmas season, but we should really be thankful for. Uh, thankful for this throne that you've given us and that you sit on it and we don't. And it's in your name we pray. Amen.